Before we enter Kali, there is a few things we need to go through. Firstly, assign three teams of two. Now assign numbers one to six to each of the three teams. Team one should be one and two. Team two should be three and four. And team three should be five and six. We are also going to assign some loadouts. These loadouts are not team specific and should be used by everyone. A shotgun for knights, a hand cannon for thrall, and a sleeper simulant for Kali. However, if you do not have it, you can substitute it with a Whisper of the Worm or a Thunderlord. For our super loadout, have the Hunters run Golden Gun. If they have Celestial Nighthawk, that's even better. Have the Titans on Hammers with Melting Points so that they can hit Kali for you guys to deal extra damage. And have the Warlocks run the Well of Radiance Super so that they can place it down during the damage phase. If they have Lunar Faction Boots, they should 100% put them on. Around the encounter, you can find a variety of symbols. Here is a map layout showing every symbol in the room. However, for now, we only want to focus on these symbols surrounding Kali. These symbols are always random and will change after every wipe or damage phase. You will need to assign a team to each of these symbols. Team 1 should be assigned to these two symbols, assign Team 2 to these two symbols, and Team 3 to these two symbols. Once each team knows what symbols they have, they will need to go around the room and find the plate with their symbol above it. To start the encounter, have everybody get on their plates. You will now begin charging your symbols. However, your plate is split into three sections. Whilst you are charging, there will be taken bombs constantly appearing on two sections of your plate. It's essential that you do not stand on them sections or else they will blow up and kill you. After one set blows up, another will appear, so pay attention. Kali can also randomly appear at your plate and begin attacking you. However, if she does this, simply shoot her until she goes away. Once your plate is charged, a Taker Knight will spawn. Everyone one must kill their knight. You will now see a text prompt saying Kali conceives an ontological weapon. So head to the middle of the arena and get ready to start the damage phase. Kali's crit spot is her head. This is where you should ideally have the warlock place his well of radiance in the middle and have everybody begin shooting at her. After damaging for a while, you will see another text prompt saying Kali prepares to wield her weapon and she will also begin chanting a ritual. When she does this, six doors will open up below where she is standing. If you do not get in a door for fast enough, she will kill you. However, it's important that you don't just run into a random door. The doors are read much like a book in that you should read them left to right. For example, if these are the doors that have opened, this would be one, and this would be six. Make sure everybody goes into the door corresponding to their number. Once you exit the door, there will be ads that have spawned, so make sure you kill them. You will get three of these damage phases, and you should have enough time in them to kill her. But in the event that you do not kill her, simply repeat the mechanics of the encounter until you get back to the damage phase. Just make sure that every team is going to the right symbol. So now that you have killed Kali, you can successfully move on to the next encounter, Shirochi. However, there is quite a long way to go and there will be a bit of jumping to do, so follow where I go in the gameplay and you should get there no problem. One thing that's important to note, however, is that along the way there is actually a secret chest you can get, and I'm going to show you how to get to that too. So once you reach the middle of the bridge here, you're going to want to stop. Look down and fall off of the edge, catching yourself on this little rock. Now you can retrieve the chest and continue on to Shirochi.
Now that we have made it to Shirochi, you guessed it, we're going to assign some teams. Four people for Puzzle Room and three people for Crystals. You may need to assign one of the people from the Puzzle Room to a Crystal due to there only being six of you. Also make sure to assign the Puzzle Room team numbers one to four. And once again we are also going to choose some loadouts. A shotgun for damaging Shirochi, a pulse rifle or hand cannon, and a Thunderlord or sleeper simulant. But to be honest with you guys, the only thing really necessary in the loadout is the shotgun, as that clearing will most likely be done with supers. For our super loadout, have the hunters on Orpheus rig tether, have the titans on hammers for backup ad clearing, and have the warlocks on well of radiance for damaging Shirochi. When the encounter starts you will be greeted by a ton of adds. It's important to note that throughout the encounter you must kill every single enemy or else you will not be able to damage Shirochi. Another thing to note is the timer on the left of your screen called Shirochi Song. This timer is present throughout the entirety of this encounter and you can probably guess what happens if it reaches zero. You die. The timer will also count down faster each time Shirochi's health is taken down. The only way to avoid the timer is to reset it by having the puzzle team complete the puzzle successfully. There is also a special enemy in this encounter called the Eye of Riven, and when they are killed they will drop a special weapon you can use to stun Shirochi. However, don't bother picking it up as it's not needed for this encounter. Once you have cleared all of the enemies, you will be approaching this plate. There are six of these plates throughout the encounter and all of them are used to start damage on Shirochi. Each plate represents a chunk of her health bar, meaning you will need to damage Shirochi from all six plates in order to kill her. Once all of the enemies are dead, crystals will spawn on each of the plates. Have the crystal team each pick up a crystal, and then have them jump on the plates and fire the crystals at each other in a triangular formation. The easiest way to do this is have each person fire the crystals anti-clockwise. However, make sure you do this fast because when you are standing on the plates you will be taking damage. Just make sure you get on the crystals quickly however because while the crystals are up, Shirochi's song will actually count down faster. You will know you have done it right if Shirochi's shield explodes. If it does, jump off of the plates and have everyone begin damaging Shirochi. This is where it's ideal to have the Warlock place his Will of Radiance down. Just like Kali, her crit spot is her head. And another thing to note is that she will wipe you with her ritual if you do not take down her health bar quickly. Once you have damaged her enough, she will go immune and teleport to the next plate. More adds will now spawn and you will once again make your way to the next damage plate. You will essentially be doing the same thing as before on every plate you come across. Once you have taken down her health on that plate however, the puzzle room will open. There will be a bunch of adds inside but that's for the ad clearers to worry about. The puzzle team on the other hand have something else to worry about. On the left middle and right walls there will be a circular picture. And on the ground there will be a 9 digit number pad. When you enter the room, one of the pictures on the wall will show a combination. You can tell what the combination is by looking at the dark parts of the picture. The puzzle team must enter the combination on the picture onto the pads by having each person stand on the correct pads at the same time. You will be able to tell what the combination is by reading the picture much like an old school telephone. For example, if we split the picture up into a grid and read it left to right, this would be 1 and this would be 9. And if this was the combination, then whoever is number 1 would jump onto this pad, and number 4 would jump onto this pad. So once you see the combination on the wall, make sure you read it left to right. You are essentially just copying the picture onto the pads with your team. Just make sure that when you are entering the code, you are facing the picture which is showing it. Once everyone knows their number, have them jump onto the corresponding pads at the same time. Because just like the crystals, the number pads will damage you. If you have entered the right combination, it will say code accepted and you will be given a new code on a different picture. You will now essentially do the same as you did 
before two more times to complete the puzzle. Just be aware that once you step on a number pad once, you cannot step on that pad again. So if you are unable to step on that pad, ask one of your teammates who hasn't stepped on that pad yet to switch with you. Once all three puzzles have been solved, Shirochi Song will reset and platforms will appear above you. You will then climb up to the next level and essentially just repeat the mechanics of the encounter again until Shirochi is killed. The only thing that changes is that once you get to Shirochi's final plate, she will have much more health than before, and there will also be a lot more ad spawning. But with enough teamwork and the right loadout, I'm sure you guys can get this done no problem. Now that we have defeated Shirochi, it's time to tackle Morgeth, the Spire Keeper. Once again, there will be quite a way to go to get there, and there will also be a secret chest along the way which I'm going to show you how to get. Just make sure to follow where I go in the gameplay. Once you get to this area here, you will need to jump along these trees until you eventually get to the top. Once you're up here, simply jump across and retrieve your chest. Now that we're at Morgeth, it's once again time to assign some teams. Put two teams of three on either side of the encounter, so left team and right team. Now assign the following roles to the team. For the left team, assign someone to first and last pickup. Assign one person to first pickup for left side. And assign one person to first cleanse on left side. On the right team, assign one person to first pick up for right side, assign one person to first cleanse for right side, and have the other person as a spare cleanser just in case. For loadouts, have everyone run a rapid fire shotgun, a primary of their choice, and a sleeper simulant or thunderlord. For our super loadouts, have the hunters run blade barrage, have the titans run hammers, and to have the Warlocks run the Well of Radiance with Lunar Faction Boots. However, the only super required here is the Well of Radiance. The goal during Morgeth is to gain enough strength to enter damage phase and kill him. However, if you take too long, Morgeth will gain strength before you and wipe your fire team. When the encounter starts, he will be at 0% strength, and if he gets to 100% strength, then it's game over. He will also try and prevent you from keeping your strength by trapping people in a whirlwind in an attempt to kill them. If this happens, one of the cleansers will have to kill one of the Eye of Riven enemies and pick up their essence. They can use their grenade button while standing next to a trapped person in order to free them. So you're essentially just racing Morgeth to who gets strength first. So to start the encounter, have each team position themselves on either side of the encounter depending on their team, and have the first and last pick up from the left side pick up this taken strength in the middle. Now each team will begin killing enemies until more taken strength spawn. There will be two on either side of the encounter, so have the first pick up from each side pick the taken strengths up. Make sure they are picked up fast, because the longer they are on the field, the faster Morgeth gains strength. Just be sure that at any point in 
the encounter, nobody holds more than two strengths at a time or they will die. It should also be noted that if at any time you die during the encounter with taken strengths on you, then they will return to the field and you will have to pick them up again. Now have the people who picked up the strengths sit near the middle of the encounter. This way it's easier for the cleansers to get to them. By now, two Eye of Riven enemies should have spawned somewhere in the encounter. It's important that you locate them quickly and kill them, because once Morgeth raises his arm, somebody with two strengths will become trapped. They will only have 20 seconds until Morgeth kills them, so make sure they are cleansed fast. If it's somebody from the left team, have the left cleanser come and cleanse them. If it's somebody from the right team, then have the right cleanser come and cleanse them. The cleanser will now have two strengths, and the person who got cleansed will now be clean. Have everyone continue killing enemies until the next set of strengths are up. Once they are up, whoever has no strength should pick them up on either side. Someone will be trapped again, however this time it doesn't matter who cleanses them so long as they are cleansed. Just make sure that the cleanser does not already have taken strengths on him or he will die. Once they are cleansed, the last strength should spawn in front of Morgoth. If it doesn't, make sure the adds are dead. Once it is up, have the person on first and last pickup pick the strength up. Everybody will now go and sit behind Morgeth. This is where the Well of Radiance is essential. Have the Warlock place his Well of Radiance down, and then have everybody shoot at the growth on Morgeth's back until he is dead. Just make sure you're fast so that he does not gain full strength and wipe you. However, in the event that he does not, congratulations, you have now killed Morgeth. Before we start the vault encounter, it's once again time to assign some teams. Assign three teams of two, the stairs team, the trees team, and the rock team, and then assign roles to each of the teams. You will need a reader and a defender, so decide between yourselves who is doing what. For our loadouts, a shotgun, a primary of your choice, and a sleeper simulant or any other high damage heavy weapon. And for our super loadouts, have the Hunters on Blade Barrage, have the Warlocks on Chaos Reach, and have the Titans on Hammers. To start the encounter, have the readers stand on the plates outside of their corresponding location. Three symbols will appear on the ball in front of you. Whoever is on stairs needs to pay attention to the middle symbol and call it out. Here is a list of all of the symbols and what you should ideally call out to your teammates. And while these are the most common callouts to use, you definitely don't need to use them if you don't want to. When Stairs calls out this symbol, whoever is on tree and rock must find where the symbol is on their plate. Depending on where the symbol is located, it will be assigned a buff. It will either be Penumbra or Antumbra. If the symbol is on the left of your plate, it will be a Penumbra symbol. And if it is on the right of your plate, it will be an Antumbra symbol. So once Stairs makes their call out, whoever has it will call out what symbol their plate is. That person will then call out their middle symbol, and the next plate will call out what their plate is. For example, if Stairs calls that they have a cloud snake in the middle position, and Tree has it on their left, they will call out that they have it on their left and that they are Penumbra. Then Tree will call out their middle symbol, and if Rock has it on their right, they will say that they have the symbol on the right of their plate and they are Antumbra. From there, you do not need to find out what the stairs plate is, since it will be slammed last. The only time that stairs will not be slammed last is in the occasion that tree and rock are both penumbra or antumbra. So once everybody knows what their plate is, step off of them. Now two of the three rooms will seal shut, however the one that is open will begin spawning a lot of adds. Whoever is the reader from that room will go inside and kill adds until the Eye of Riven spawns. Once killed, have the reader pick up the taken essence that spawns. The room will also seal shut and another will open. So those who are outside will call out to the person inside where the opening is. Depending where it is, the runner will run to the closest exit with the essence. Here is a map layout showing the layout of the rooms. It should be noted that once the runner picks up the Taken Essence, they will have one of two buffs on the left side of their screen. They will either have Penumbra or Antumbra. So if they have Penumbra, they must slam onto the plate which is a Penumbra plate. And the same goes for Antumbra. 
Just make sure that you communicate with the runner what plate they are slamming on. Whilst the runner is making their way back to the plates, keep your eyes peeled for these knights. They must be killed immediately because if they get to your plate they will slam their sword into it and wipe you. Once the runner returns, they will slam the key above the corresponding plate by using the grenade button. If they have done it correct, the cycle will continue. Two of the three rooms will be sealed shut. The reader outside of the open room will go inside and obtain the taken essence. They will see a buff on the left of their screen and they will slam the essence onto the plate corresponding to that buff. However, be aware that each time somebody runs, another knight will spawn. So when the first person runs, there will be one knight. When the second person runs, there will be two knights. And on the third runner, there will be three knights. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled. Also, make sure you get this encounter done fast, because as per usual, there is a wipe timer that you will need to beat. You will do this three times on three separate stages, and if done correctly, you can now move on to the next encounter. Riven of a Thousand Voices Now before we enter Riven, I should point out that there are two methods to killing her. The cheese way, and the legit way. But due to the popularity of it, I'm going to be teaching the cheese way in this guide. However, if you guys want a guide on the legit method, then let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a guide on it in the future. With that being said, we don't actually need any teams for this encounter. We do, however, need to assign some loadouts. These loadouts are essential, so make sure you do not ignore them. Have five people using a rocket launcher with cluster bombs, and have one person using a tractor cannon. And for our super loadouts, have the hunters on golden gun with celestial nighthawk if possible, have the titans on melting point, and have the warlocks on well of radiance with lunar faction boots. However, the only supers here that I would say are required is the Hunters and the Warlocks. Around the room there are six plates. Have each person step on a plate to start the encounter. You will begin descending into a room with two exits. Have everyone make their way to the room with a crystal in front of it. Go all the way inside until you reach the room shown in the gameplay, and pay attention to the black screen in the center. If you see a silhouette of Riven swim past, tell your team to stay in the room. If she does not, then exit the room with your team and have them stand up against this wall here that you see in the gameplay. You will be teleported out of the room and you will have to make your way back in there to get to Riven, so follow where I go in the gameplay to get back to the room. After all ads are dead, Riven will burst through the screen in the center. Have the Warlock place their Well of Radiance down, and have the person with tractor cannon shoot Riven with it for the damage boost. Now have everybody shoot at the center of Riven's mouth. Just make sure no one at any point shoots Riven in her eye, because if you do this, she will wipe you. If you get enough DPS on Riven, she will begin dying and send you to the Ascendant Realm. If you do not, she will wipe you. But in the event that you are taken into the Ascendant Realm, you will need to ascend your way to the top before you die. There will be taken Phalanx in here trying to push you off, and you will also be slowly losing health. So make sure you do this fast. When you make it to the top, jump into the white orb to be transported back into the room. Riven will once again burst through the screen, and you will need to finish her off before she wipes you. Once dead, head inside of her throat and shoot at her heart to complete the encounter. In order to finish off Riven, we need to deliver her heart to the Techians. And since we are at the end of the raid, for once I'm not going to assign any loadouts for you, so go out there and have fun. To begin the encounter, look at the side of your screen for something called Fates Chosen. If you have this buff, you are the only person who can pick up the heart. Have the person with Fates Chosen pick up the heart and have everybody run to Riven's throat. Having those who are not chosen stop before her tongue. 
However, the person chosen should run onto her tongue and stop at the end of it. They will then be teleported into a room which we will be calling the Rainbow Room. When you enter the Rainbow Room, there will be a ton of ads that you'll need to be killing. And there will also be these taken strengths that we'll talk about in just a second. The moment the first person is pulled into the room, somebody else will be chosen. They must pick up the heart and begin making their way through the room. Those who are not chosen should be killing ads non-stop. And the heart holder should be counting down along with the timer on the left of their screen. It symbolizes a protective bubble around them which will protect your teammates from wiping. However, it gets smaller as the timer runs down, meaning if your teammates leave the bubble for too long, they will die. When the timer gets to 3, have the person in the rainbow room pick up the taken strength. They will keep going as before, however this time there won't be any orb to pick up to save the heart holder, as you can only be saved once before you are pulled inside. So once they are pulled inside, have the next chosen person pick up the heart. Just make sure that when you drop the heart, none of your teammates are standing next to it, as it has a chance to pull them into the rainbow room. From here, it's the exact same as it was before, the only thing that changes is that for each person new inside of the rainbow room, there will be another orb to pick up. But whoever was transported in first should ideally pick up the last orb each time, so have everybody else inside there pick up the orbs, leaving one left for that person. Just be aware that like in the Morgeth encounter, if you pick up more than two taken strengths at a time, you will die. So please communicate with your team throughout the encounter, I can't stress this enough. The heart holders will eventually get to the vault encounter. Similar to the actual encounter, a door will be sealed shut when they get inside. But the door that is sealed shut is always random and it's different each time you go into the encounter. Run into the open door and make your way through the tunnel on the side of the room. When you eventually get to this area, drop down the hole and run up the stairs. Slam the heart to finish the encounter and complete the raid. You can now go and unlock one of the chests with your key and begin celebrating. You have just beaten the Last Wish raid in Destiny 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, a like is greatly appreciated. Have fun raiding and have a nice day.